whale vertebra, mastodon mandible, a sloth claw, and a sperm whale tooth. So I gotta ask, are you guys ready to go fossil hunting? Hey, good morning. So what we're doing today is a little bit different than any of the other videos I've shot so far. Uh, we will be fossil hunting with a couple of friends of mine. That's Mike and Tony. They're a couple of miles uh, ahead of us right now. But what, what the plan is, is that uh, I will be meeting them. And I have a, a friend of mine with me as well in the boat. It's Jerry. He's a videographer, so he's going to help out with the filming. And uh, we're going to meet up with uh, Mike and Tony and uh, let them explain what they're going to be doing this morning in the way of hunting for fossils, how they do it, the legality of it. We got Mike, we got Tony. What kind of fossils do you hope to find today? Uh, in this site, probably lots of giant armadillo, maybe some bison, maybe some camel, horse, uh, some uh, shark's teeth. So how, how deep are you diving? Uh, 20, today, about 26. 20, yeah, somewhere 20, 22. And how do you know where to go to find these fossils? Years of experience and uh, we'll dive, make, we're looking for a new site. We may make 10 dives before we hit. So, it's, so there's no guarantees. And, uh, what are the legalities of diving for fossils in the St. John's River? We have permits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to get a permit. But, and then you're allowed to keep them. And, and oftentimes you donate your uh, specimens that you find. Right, we got at least four uh, grad students doing research on certain uh, species. So those species go to those grad students. We've actually found two what we call once in a lifetime sites uh, in our lifetime. And Tony and I have been diving together for 42 years. So basically you're kind of almost blind down there. Right. This is black water, right? Last week we had about one foot visibility with a very strong light, about 4,000 lumen light. You can see about a foot. About a foot. That's not very far. No. <laughs> but it's enough to see our compass and our pressure gauge. some time Jerry and I are gonna head uh, down river a little bit uh, the St. John's River flows north we're gonna see if we can catch some fish maybe a, a nice sunshine bass perhaps a lunker catfish don't know until you try all right Jerry's got a fish nice big catfish yeah, just ease them up. Oh, yeah. He put a little power to you, Jerry. Yeah, it is. He's trying to teach you a lesson, <laughs> and you're trying to teach him a lesson. Yeah, that's a okay, get, get him on up here. Oh, he's nice. Nice catfish. He got 10, 12, 15 pounds, maybe. Maybe more than that. Well, he's out of way. It might be the biggest one I ever caught. He's wearing out, but he doesn't want to get any closer. It's all right. See what ha what's happening. The current's pulling him on back. Uh, I think he's 10, 12. Nice. Can you got anything to weigh him with? He's not with me right now. Look at him. We're rolling around. We wore him out. All right, Jerry, what do you think? Well, I think it's the biggest fish you ever caught, at least the biggest catfish you've ever caught. Well, I'll tell you what, he's a he's a bruiser. I think uh, he easily goes 15. All right, Jerry, pick that bad boy up. Beautiful catfish. 15, 18 pounds. All right, let's at put least. him back. Let's put him back in the water. Put him back in the water? Yeah. When you do, just, just pull my finger out. Huh? Yep, pull it out. There you go. He's happy now. All right. There's a happy oh. fish. Jerry had to uh, leave. He had an appointment. But I'm making my way back to Mike and Tony. Uh, matter of fact, I'm coming 
after they're about now. So I'm on board with uh, Mike and Tony. They uh, just brought their dive bags up. So tell us what we have here, guys. Yeah, box turtle. Okay. Land tortoise. Yeah, land tortoise. Big tortoise. Giant. Now what part is, is that part of a shell on the land tortoise? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Now how big were they? About like the Galapagos tortoise. Okay. That right. big? Yeah. Not related. We got enough armadillo here. I think we can put the shell back together. Now this yeah, was this was a much larger armadillo than what we have now. Small car size. Small part of the armor shell. On the armadillo? Yeah, the armor plating. There's a front tooth of a oh, giant yeah. sloth. Now that, they stood about 10 feet tall. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 16 feet long. That's another armadillo. Yeah. Armadillo. Uh, taper. Beautiful. Oh, man. Look, it's got the roots. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful specimen. Now, this this would be similar to the taper in South America. Well, there's a number of different tapers. Mm -hmm. Mountain tapers. And what do we have here? This, I'm not quite sure. I know it's... Uh, that might be llama because it's way too big to be deer. A lot of critters living many, many thousands of years ago that obviously aren't living here now. How, how far back do you think these uh, fossil specimens go? They went extinct about 10,000 years ago, but they date back in the millions. Because mm -hmm. yeah, we have you know, the shark's teeth. Of course, that goes way back. That goes way back. Now, is this a shark's vertebrae? That's probably maybe a dolphin. Dolphin? No, I think it's not a shark. Shark? Shark. Yeah. Because it's so concave. Yeah. I think this other one. This one might be dolphin, right? Yeah, they're usually kind of blunt. That's probably deer. Toe bone. Toe bone, yes. I recognize that myself. But that's a fossil, though. Yeah. That's fossilized. So it's many, many. Yeah, it's old. Yeah, and we usually try to clean these up before we get back to the house. And the reason is they're loaded with anthropods. Anth anthropods, what do you... We're kind of scooting along right here. Yes. And you don't want that at your house? Oh, they start to smell. Oh, okay. So they, I, I was trying to figure out the... Right. Kind of look like a little tiny miniature shrimp. Uh, I was just trying to figure out the why, the why of it. I've seen them they're, before. They're living on these fossils. So when they die, they get the stinking bad. There's a lot saying. of algae on here that they like to eat. Gotcha. And we'll see crabs down there sitting on top of these fossils, just eating the algae off of them. Little, little crabs like that. Mm-hmm. There's a gator scoop. Very nice. Mm-hmm. And this is a, a, called a plonctodon. <laughs> now are you are you let me show you okay how you, how you can tell yeah okay <laughs> you, you saw, i knew that was coming this is a camel or it's actually a llama but we, everybody calls them camels there's a couple of different so are we going back ten thousand years here minimum yeah okay so beautiful specimen that's very it's it's solid, but it's it's not super heavy. It's not heavily mineralized, but I mean it's it's got a little bit of heft to it. Because this is where the is that part of the jaw is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's right there, mm -hmm. and the, it'll come out and then turn. I would not recognize that as being a manatee. I mean, it's, uh, it's just such a well, a fragmented a piece. Piece of manatee rib. Rib. Now that yes, and that looks more like. Go back. Uh, hundreds of thousands of years old. Is this a rib? Yep, it's yeah. a rib. Probably manatee. For, to, to a what? Probably manatee. A small manatee then. Mm -hmm. or, or maybe getting down toward the, um, yeah, the tail section. And there's a manatee. Really? So yeah. this would obviously be a baby, a baby manatee. Uh, Correct. No, that well, could be adult. Yeah. Really? That's good size for manatee. So I thought that their teeth would be much larger than that. Uh, was they're larger than human. Mm -hmm. And they, when they get worn down, they kind of look like them. Then you got these. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
that's a that's a gorgeous specimen right there. Reminds me when I was a kid on the beach at Venice in southwest Florida collecting shark's teeth with my mom and dad. Quite a few different specimens here. Yeah, you y'all did good. Dad, what is this now? Baby mastodon. A baby mastodon. The uh, intro where I showed that giant mandible and the mastodon tooth uh, still set in the mandible. I mean, this that tooth is substantially larger than than this one. It's not around at all. No, it's not. I wonder if it's not some kind of whale. Yeah. Really? Because if it was uh, part of the sperm whale. if it was a land mammal, I think it would have been curved. But this sits straight up and down. Sharp. A little sharper point than what you find in most alligators. Yeah, it's uh, straight up and down. Yeah. Yeah, we hit the sharp's teeth. So as you're going along, so you're just feeling these, is that correct? I mean, can you actually see anything? You, yeah, you can see. Uh, you see about that far? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's all you need to see. And do you have that light that you were talking about, Tony? Go ahead and shine it in there. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you. Is this, an, is this another Mastodon? No, that's the one he Oh, that's the one we just had? Yeah. Baby, I was just cleaning it up a little bit. Uh, this is part of a, this guy here, a giant tortoise. Okay. There's little bumps on their legs. Okay. Uh, spurs. So this would be a, uh, uh, yeah, like a bone spur? Yeah, yeah spur. The giant the, land tortoise? Yeah, on their leg. Well, oh, I think y'all done good. You got a big variety. Yes. Yeah. And this one again is what? Sloth. Sloth. And that's, that's what they call the giant sloth. Yeah. That's called Ramatherium. I hope you found the fossils that Mike and Tony recovered from the bottom of the St. John's River as interesting as I did. And I can appreciate their passion. They've been doing this for 42 years. Uh, when I was a young boy down in the Tampa area, I know my dad and I went out at least every other weekend, uh, either hunting Indian artifacts or hunting fossils. It's just uh, an, a very interesting hobby. It takes you back in time. Uh, very tactile. Uh, you can, you know, you can touch and feel what you what you find, and you've done it yourself. I found this a couple of weeks ago diving. Uh, I thought it was a whale tooth. I, I had a number of different teeth. I tried to make it be. So I took it over to UF and they identified it as being a short-faced bear tooth. I mean, it's not whole. Uh, and one of the reasons is because of the enamel, uh, they believe it to be a short-faced bear. Yeah, and they would have been here at the same time with the mastodon and the, the mammoth. We actually found a mammoth scapula with bite marks, and this pretty much fits into the scapula. Mm -hmm.